In this video, we're going to be tweaking Windows 10 for music production. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Now if you've been singing a lot of blues songs recently because Windows 10 is getting you down and its sluggish performance is getting in the way of your next big production, then look no further than this video. I've put together a comprehensive list of tweaks you can do in Windows 10 that will really help it run smoother. Now there's a lot of them and none of the individual ones make a huge amount of difference, but if you follow it all the way through, then you will get a big difference in performance. I've put it all in a PDF as well and there's a link in the description down below. You can click on that, go to my website and download the free PDF to follow along and keep for future reference. Now before we get into it, if you like this kind of content, all about home recording, DAWs, plugins, gear, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get to hear about my future videos. Now let's get on with those tweaks. So the first thing we're going to do is look at power options. So go down to the start button and right click and click on power options. So this is going to surprisingly bring up our power options. We're not going to use the options here because we're going to get a little bit more detail than that. So I want you to click on additional power settings. It's probably on the right over here, but it may be down below if you've got a different sort of screen size. So click on additional power settings and it's going to bring up this old screen for doing it. Now what I want you to do is make sure that your preferred plans is set to high performance and then click on change plan settings. Once you've done that, for display, for turn the display off, we want it set to never. And for put the computer to sleep, we want it set to never. Now, if you're on a mobile device like a laptop, this the layout will be a little bit different here and it'll have options for when you've got the power switched on and you wanna make sure it's set to never for both of those things. Now we're gonna go even more detailed and click on change advanced power settings here. Now, I'll just bring this over to the middle. The first thing we're gonna do is set the hard disk up. So we're gonna make sure that turn off hard disk after is set to zero. And that will just mean that the hard disks are never switched off. That will make things much more efficient with your hard disk when your DAW tries to access them it or them. Now the next thing we're going to do is go down to USB settings and we want to make sure that your USB devices are always switched on. So where it says USB selective suspend settings, we want the setting to be disabled. The next thing we're going to go do is go down to uh, processor power management and for the minimum processor state here we're going to set it to 100% and then also for the maximum processor state, we're always gonna set it to 100%. So the CPU will always be working at 100% and that's what you're gonna want when you're recording music. And last of all in here, we go down to display and where it says turn off display after, we're gonna set that to never, okay? So that is all of your uh, power options there. If you've made any changes, make sure you click the apply button down here and you are done for power settings. Okay, so this one's really, really quick, but it's known to cause problems when you're recording in your DAW, and that's to turn off the system sounds. Those are the little sort of notification sounds and things that Windows makes when you're using it. So we're gonna go down again to this search area in the taskbar, and we're gonna uh, start to type uh, change uh, system, and it should come up pretty quick there at the top, change system sounds. So we'll click on that. It takes a moment on my system, and it opens now. And here you have this option here for the sound scheme. So I would change that to no sounds and apply, click OK, and you're done. Okay, so next we're gonna deal with privacy settings and that may seem a strange kind of setting for performance but it does affect it quite a bit so let's right click on the start button and we will go to settings and when this window pops up we'll click on privacy down here so just click on that now this brings up a whole bunch of options which you can see down the left. And we're just gonna go through quickly one by one. So for general, I just have everything switched 
off. For speech, I also have that switch off. Don't see any reason for it. Um, for inking and typing personalization, I have that switched off. You could ignore it or if you need it, have it switched on. Uh, diagnostics and feedback. Now, this is where uh, they have information about your computer sent up to Microsoft so they can see how things are going. Um, I have that set to basic. You can't actually switch it off, um, but this is gonna save lots of data being sent across the internet up to Microsoft from your computer. And uh, I have everything switched off down here. Feedback frequency, I set to never as well. Now, the next thing that we're going to look at, we can ignore activity history. No need to change anything there. We'll go down to location. Now I have this set to off. I don't feel the need for to be sending my location out to the internet all the time unless I explicitly want it. So you can have that switched off. Now camera, uh, I do use uh, a webcam quite a bit. Obviously I'm using one right now and I use it for chatting, uh, Skype, that kind of thing. If you never use the camera on your computer for anything, then you could just switch it off. Uh, but if you do have it switched on, then do go through the options down here and only have it switched on for the apps that you actually use it for. So uh, I don't use Feedback Hub, so I'll switch that off now and I don't think I need it switched on for Microsoft Edge because I never use Microsoft Edge uh, and down here are some desktop apps which I do use the camera with so I'll leave them switched on the same for microphone I actually tend to have it switched on because again I use it for chats and things like that and the same deal you just want to go down and make sure you're only using it for actual apps that you do actually use on your system. Um, other than that, you can switch everything else off. Uh, voice activation, um, I actually uh, probably would switch this off. I haven't really delved into this one too much. This is where you can sort of say things and activate the computer. So actually, I'll just go ahead and I'm going to switch that off now because I don't think it's going to do any harm if I do that. I'm going to go to notifications next. Now for notifications, I also have everything switched off. I just don't want uh, notifications popping up all the time, especially when I'm recording. Uh, account info, um, I usually have that set to off, um, but you may want to keep it on. Some apps actually use things like your profile photo and things like that, so that's up to you. Uh, contacts, I don't use them on the computer at all, so I just have them switched off. The same for calendar, I just have it switched off. I don't have a, a phone link to anything, so I will actually switch that one to off for phone. Uh, call history the same again that can be switched off email i don't really use email on my computer i i do use um the outlook uh you know the office outlook app but that's not a part of the windows operating system and i do use uh, gmail and stuff so that's all in the browser so i don't need to have that switched on uh the same for tasks i have everything switched off there messaging I have that all switched off. And then going further down from that, if you do use Bluetooth, then under radios here, you probably want to have it switched on. I wish they would just rename that to sort of Bluetooth and stuff, but it's called radios. Uh, the next thing I'm going to go down to is other devices. I have that switched off so that, you know, um, things that haven't been paired can't just hook up to my computer. Uh, background apps. This is a whole bunch of apps which do run in the background. I just have them switched off. Now, if there's something specific that you think you want to have switched on, then do switch it on. But honestly, there's not many things that I want to have running in the background. This will make quite a big difference to performance, especially when you're recording. Next, we go down to app diagnostics. You can just turn that off. Um, and then we have automatic file downloads and documents. You can just ignore that pictures, videos, file system. Just ignore all of those ones at the bottom there. Now, some of these settings that you've just changed here may change after a Windows update. So do make sure if you do a Windows update in future that you come back and check these because they get switched on by default, sneaky Microsoft. So the next thing we're going to do is look at some more system settings. So I want you to right click again on that start button and go to system. And we're just going to work through this left hand menu again. So very quickly for display, you don't really need to change anything. You can ignore that. The same for sound. You, we've already changed the actual system sound, so we won't do anything more to that. Notifications and actions. Now, 
What I would suggest here is you probably want to switch this off, which is what I'm about to do. But if you really think there's some apps that you want to get some notifications from, then you could switch them on individually. But I'm going to go ahead and just switch them all off so that I'm not interrupted at all. Now, the next thing I'm going to go down to is focus assist. This is a really important one. This also controls whether you get sort of notifications and things when you're busy. So I would set this to priority only. And then I'll go through and I'll click on this customize my priority list. And then I will add any apps um, that I want to hear things from or find about find out about things from um, when you know I'll add them in here. But I actually don't want any apps to interrupt my work. So I'm going to go back. Also, just while we're there, um, there's this stuff where you can link your phone now to Windows. And you probably want to switch all of that off as well, to be honest with you. It's a pain when you're recording. And the next thing we're going to look at is power and sleep. Well, in fact, we've already dealt with the power options with the additional power settings earlier. So we will skip over that. For storage, we can ignore it. For tablet mode, I would just uh, switch everything off here. So just put that those switches there both to off. Uh, for multitasking, it sort of depends on your preferences a little bit here. I actually do like all the windows snapping and all that sort of business, so I leave it switched on, but um, it does potentially take a hit on your CPU and stuff, so you might want to switch that off if you really want to squeeze every last, last bit of power out of your PC. Next, going down to projecting to this PC, I've just have everything switched off. Um, shared experiences you can ignore, uh, the clipboard you can ignore, the remote desktop you can ignore, and the about section you can ignore. Okay, so you may not be aware of this, but Windows has lots of maps features, which you probably don't want to use when you're recording music. So let's go ahead and switch them off. So we're going to go down to a right click on the start button again. We'll go to settings, then we'll click on apps. And then down on the left hand side, you can see an option for offline maps. Basically, you just want to switch everything off here. And when you have switched everything off uh, to save some disk space, you might want to click on delete all maps as well to get rid of all the maps on your system. Now, there are some services installed with Windows 10 which do run sometimes and you really don't need them to. So we're going to go in and this is a little bit more techy, this one, and we're going to switch off some of those or disable some of those services. So we go down to the taskbar again and type in the search box uh, services. We'll start to type services and then it appears at the top there. We'll click on services. And that opens up this very techy looking window here. Now, there's a number of services that you really probably don't need and you'll be wanting to disable them. Now, if you're not sure, and there's a lot of services running here, if you're not sure, then it's best not to disable them because it might it can make things go a bit sort of haywire. Um, you can always Google them and find out what they are and then you might be able to figure out from that. But there's some I want to point out to you and I have put them in the PDF so you want to look at that just to get a list of them to work through. But let's have a look at this one here. It's called All Join Router Services and I'm just going to click on that. Now to disable this what you do is you right click, click on properties, go down to where it says startup and change that to disables and I'll click apply there. Okay, so that's how you disable a service. So the other ones that I would have a look at is down here, this one called, where are we? Uh, download Maps Manager. I would actually go ahead and disable that. You don't need that one. That's gonna make your startup a bit quicker if you wanna get into recording some music. Um, and then we'll go down to uh, geolocation services. That can also be disabled. I'll do that now. And then I'll, you can go through others. All of these Hyper-V services down here, they can all be disabled. And then a little further down from there, we also have the Xbox Live ones right at the bottom. Um, and if you go down to the bottom, there's all these Xbox Live ones here. They can all be disabled. So that's not all of the ones. You'll have to refer to the PDF um, to see a more complete list than that. As I say, do this a little bit carefully, but most of these ones you should be fine if you switch them off. 
Now Windows has some animations and things which can slow things down. So we're going to keep those to a minimum. So we'll go down to the search bar again and we will type in uh, system settings. And by the time you've done that, you should start to see an option up here, which is ad, uh, view advanced system settings. So we'll click on that. And that will be on the advanced tab here by default. Then under performance here, you will click on settings. So let's click on that. Now, what I do is I go down to uh, adjust for best performance. I change it to that and then I click apply and that switches everything off. Now, there may be some things that you want to have switched on. So that's what was in my custom settings there. So I like to have switched on. I like to show thumbnails instead of icons. I like to show Windows contents while I'm dragging. Um, and I like to uh, smooth the edges of screen fonts. So I'll switch that on and I'll click apply. And that just means that I do actually like to see a few things happening, but not everything's running and slowing down my computer. Okay, so this next step is optional, but I do highly recommend it. And it involves you downloading a free program called C Cleaner. Now, I should say that I am not in any way affiliated with CCleaner. I don't know them. Uh, they haven't paid me to do this, etc., etc. I'm just recommending this because I've used it for two or three years now and it made a massive difference to my system. So once you've downloaded and the link is in the description, then do open CCleaner. And we're going to start off by clicking on tools down here and that should start off on this uninstall tab and you can just go through and look at all of the things which are installed on your system have a look at all the things i've got on my system too many things so if you go through each of them one by one you can choose to uninstall them now you may not know what some of them are so you might want to google and double check but if you do download a lot of demos and things like that or just use things for a short period of time it is worth making sure you get rid of them off of your system so you can do that here the next thing we're going to do is go down to this tab called startup now this makes a really really big difference potentially to how your machine is running because this controls which apps run at startup now a lot of things when you install them automatically have a default setting that they will start uh, when you start your computer and they're running in the background and you're not really aware of it and they're using up all of your CPU. So you can go through again, you might want to check what they are. Some things do need to run at startup, but for example, down here, I will uh, look at this uh, start alpha track applet. That's for an old piece of hardware that I used to have. So I will disable that. Uh, I could have even deleted it, but I'll disable it for now. And you get the idea that can make a really big difference to starting up your PC and then uh, how quickly it runs once it's started. So the next thing we're going to do is have a bit of a clean up of files and things like that. So we'll go up to custom clean and then we're going to click on analyze and it's going to run through our system. It's asked me if I want to close down Chrome. I'm going to say no because I need it for now. And it's done an assessment. Now you may have a lot more things down here that are taking up valuable file space. So if you've got those things, you'll go ahead and run cleaner click continue and it's going to go ahead and free up all that disk space for you, which is pretty valuable when you're actually recording. The next thing we're going to do is go to and do a registry clean. Now, this can make a really big difference again to how well your machine runs in on the whole. So you're going to start off by clicking on scan for issues. And it's going to go through your registry and it's going to find entries that, you know, relate to files which are no longer there, etc, etc. So once it's run through and you can see there it's found quite a few on my system, uh, then you can go ahead and click on fix selected issues. Now, uh, it says, do you want to back up the registry? I always click yes and I'll do it now and I'll choose the file location, click save. But I've got to say, I've never had a problem at all. Um, things have always run fine after I've cleaned up the registry, but just in case it accidentally, it accidentally deletes a registry entry that you didn't want deleted, then you should do that. Now, once that's done, you can go ahead and click on fix all selected issues. Click on that, and that can make a pretty big difference to how quickly your machine runs. 
Now this very last tip is a strange one. I've seen this in other people's videos and I'm not sure whether you should do it really. I'll let you figure out for yourself and it's to do with optimizing your hard disks. Now I should say right at the beginning that you should have more than one hard drive on your system. I like to have a hard drive which has just got Windows and my program files and another hard drive which saves things like your song files, audio files and that kind of thing. It's really worth keeping them on separate disks. Now, in order to optimize these hard drives in the way that is sometimes suggested, we're going to start off by right clicking this start button and then we're going to click on device manager. And then we'll go to disk drives. Now I've got two or three on the system at the moment, actually three, but I'm just using two of them normally. One's an external one. What you need to do is go into the disk, or select it, right click, go to properties, and then go to the policies tab. Now you're going to see two checkboxes here. Now some people recommend that you actually check both of those and you will get an improved hard disk or SSD performance. However, on some brands and on some models, this is not true. So what I do recommend, and I've put a link in the description to something called Crystal Disk Mark. And what you can do is just test it with this second one switched on, test the speed, then switch it off and test the speed. I have found with my two main drives that if I have this second checkbox ticked, my drives actually get slower. However, some people have reported that if they have them both, both ticked, then their hard drives get faster. So you're going to have to find that out for yourself using Crystal Disk Mark and I've put a link to that in the description. So I really hope that this guide has helped you out. If you're confused about anything at all, then please do ask questions in the comments down below. And myself or someone else will answer the question for you and help you move on with a faster PC. If you like this video, then please do hit the like button and don't forget to share it with your other musician friends. They could really benefit from a guide like this and it could help their productivity. If you didn't like this video for any reason, then please do hit the dislike button twice. If you like this kind of content, then please do subscribe, ring the bell on YouTube, and you'll get to hear about my future videos. And there's a couple of them showing just here, which you may be really interested in. I will see you in the next video.